Hello everyone, Norma Woodcock speaking to you from Perth in Western Australia. The scripture I've chosen for today is John 14, verse 27. Jesus said to his disciples, My own peace I give you, a peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. I want to take you back to a, a very early experience I had. I'm going back 38 years or something now. I was sitting outside my Jesuit director's, uh, spiritual director's office, and in front of me was a little flower bed. It was a little ordinary flower bed. It had wooden borders that had been weathered. It had vincas growing at the little faces up to the sky. It had a green jade bush. The earth had been turned. It had rained and you could smell it. There were little ants crawling on the brick paving around this little flower bed. I was one with it. It was one with me. Then the door opened and Father said, come in, dear. And I said, Father, Father. I said, the little flower bed and the jade bush and, and the vincas and the little ants were crawling and, and the wooden borders and the earth had been turned and it had rained. And Father, I was one with it and it was one with me. And he said, it's called peace, dear. I remember saying to him, if the world knew that this is what Jesus Christ offered, they'd come on their hands and knees because I had searched for peace everywhere and in everything. And I found it outside that little flower bed, it was a moment. But then I lost it. I lost it. I blame my husband. I blame my children. I blame my finances. I blamed everyone and everything. You're taking away my peace. You're taking away my peace. I had to learn why this was happening. So Jesus says we already have peace. My peace I bequeath to you. My own peace I give you, a peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. There's a story about this beggar. He sat on this old wooden box and he would beg for alms every day. And he'd put out his basket and any alms for a poor beggar, any alms for a poor beggar. One day this man came up and said to him, what, what is in that box you are sitting on? And the beggar said, no, nothing. The man said, have you ever looked? The beggar said, no, it's just an empty box. And the man said, well, why don't you have a look? So the beggar opened the box and it was full of gold. There he was, poor and begging. And in the box was pure gold. Inside you and inside me is the peace of Christ, which is beyond question because he has said it. If he has said it, then it is true. He is the Son of God, fully human, fully divine. My peace I give you. Therefore, you and I have within us that gift of peace. Why do we not experience peace? Well, Jesus tells us, and in the parenthesis in the Amplified Bible, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated or disturbed, fearful, intimidated, cowardly or unsettled. I'd like to just give some practical advice here. When I teach on peace, the practical do's and don'ts of life. You know, we never leave margins in our lives. We're all so busy. In fact, it's a, a motto in the world today somehow is, oh, I'm so busy. It's almost like we wear it like a badge because, you know, if we're really busy, then we're really important. And then, you know, we, we're really a bit special and then we're a bit better than everybody else. People wear it like a badge. Don't leave margins in our lives. We have to get to the other side of town and we don't allow for traffic always rushing somewhere, always late. I remember hearing this priest give this teaching and he was at the traffic lights. He was going to actually speak about peace and the traffic lights were red. So he was drumming his fingers on the dashboard and come on, come on, come on, come on. And he felt like deep down in here an impression within, he felt like the Lord was saying to him, this moment is as perfect as it can be. And if we just take that away from this session, in situations that we cannot change, that we do not control, to be able to say, this moment is as perfect as it can be, and it will pass. When we're agitated or disturbed, it is our fault. And I wonder, is it because we have resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, revenge happening in our hearts, 
That will kill our peace every time. So the practical advice is choose not to be offended. If someone offends you, flick it off. Move on with your life. Another practical point is be discerning in what you listen to on social media, on television, etc. Instagram. This can take away your peace. I remember one man who was just so agitated that he was watching something and it was really doomsdayish on social media and he was heading for a nervous breakdown. And I actually had to say to him, you need to stop listening to that and you need to start playing some Christian music, Gregorian chant or some wonderful songs or hymns that you love. You need to get away from that. It's taking away your peace and that is not of God. And he did and he recovered gradually. So I have clients that share with me. They lose their peace in so many different situations, but health issues. It's like a deep, deep fear within them will latch onto something. And so they might feel like, oh, I've got that strange feeling here. It must be something really bad. And I've got little children. What if I'm going to die? They're already planning their death before they've even gone to check it out with the doctor. Other people, that, that fear takes away their peace and it latches onto money. It's, it's like the share market's going down and therefore we won't have enough money to retire, or we won't have enough money, etc., etc. And then other people, it's the relationships. This person will abandon me, this relationship's not going to work out. And so we get agitated and disturbed and fearful in so many different ways. Myself, I was afraid of everything, that everything would go wrong all the time. And if I can say the biggest thing that I feel God's done in my life, it has brought me to a place where I can rediscover peace. When I lose it, and we all do, I know that I can come back to that place and go, you are within me, you are in charge of this. But very importantly, once again, our thinking can be wrong. Proverbs 23, 7 in the King James Version, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, capture the thoughts of your imagination. You know, when we're just even sitting, waiting for something to happen, our thoughts can go in one direction or another. And I found that so often I have to actually grab a hold of my thoughts. I can remember one day that something went, was going bad in, in my family and um, I began to be fearful and agitated and disturbed about it. And I kept focusing on the problem and thinking, no, I don't know what to do and how I'm going to sort this one out, but, but dear God, you're going to have to help me with this. But I kept going back to the problem instead of leaving it with him. Then I realised I had to change my thinking. God, you have a good plan for my family. You always have. You're going to sort this out. If there's anything I can do, show me, but I'm trusting you to do it. We have to change our thinking. And one of the ways that I believe is a very practical way is we have to deal with the what ifs of life. We all have the what ifs. What if this happened? What if that happened? And I remember a young man uh, sharing about his father was quite sick and um, he had some severe neurological illness and he was on strong medication and he was threatening suicide. Well, you can imagine how shocking that would be to deal with. And so he thought, what do I do here? And he, he'd heard about this counsellor, so he rang this counsellor, a spiritual person, and he thought the counsellor will say, no, no, we will pray about it, we'll pray it won't happen. But the counsellor said a few words that changed his life and then he began to look at a deeper level of the counsellor said, what if it does happen? And the young man said, I'd be devastated. And the counsellor said, yes, it would affect you for the rest of your life, but would God be with you? And that to me is the keys to the what ifs. We don't know what is ahead, but God knows what is ahead. And he will be with us no matter what is ahead. He has promised us that. He will be with us till the end of time. He will give us the grace in that moment. You know, it's funny. There's no grace given for the what ifs of tomorrow. There's no grace given for that. Grace is given in the now, in the present moment. Grace is given in the now. And so you can't be asking for grace to deal with something that hasn't happened yet. You know, Mark Twain is supposed to have said, I have suffered a great many things in my life. Most of them never happened. It was a bit like us. I look back and I, well, I, well, I worried that was going to happen. I worried about this is going to happen. Be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. So we have to replace that wrong thinking. Something good is going to happen for me today. Replace the negative with the positive. Now, peace will grow, peaceful thought by peaceful thought. 
But can I tell you, one of the most important things is to learn to live in the sacrament of the present moment. You know that little flower bed? Do you know what happened in that flower bed? I put down my baggage. I put down my regrets. I wish I hadn't done that in the past and where I've come from. I put down the what ifs, what if that happens tomorrow? I was there wholly in that moment. And that moment is available to you and to me right now. If we can get our thinking out of the way and just focus on the beauty of the smile on the face of that person who loves you. If we can focus on the, on the aroma of that coffee, simple things. If we can just focus on the beauty of nature, focus on something that's happening in, just in the here and now. There is a story told about this monk who was sweeping the floor and he was asked, what would you do if you knew Jesus Christ was coming back tomorrow? He said, I'd continue sweeping the floor. So whatever it is that you are doing, keep doing it and allow God to take care of whatever may be ahead. So I believe that this teaching can help us to learn how to get back the peace when we lose it to work out why we have lost it, to look at our thinking and to begin to not be so agitated or fearful or disturbed, but come back to that amazing gift that's deep within you and within me. Jesus said it, he meant it, it's true, because he is who he is. God bless you and thank you for listening. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.